Well, you I don't know anybody. Uh, here we just went for the party. Were you surprised, surprised when this incident happened? Yes, of course we were. Merry Christmas. Ow, too strong. I know what we did. Christmas party. A Christmas party. A few hundred. Christmas party. A couple hundred. Merry Christmas. What do you think? All we just want to do is arrange it like we have been promised to be arranged. A Christmas party. For our clients and our staff. For when? From five to nine. That's all. Yeah. We certainly expect it to, yeah. You know what happened in here? No, I don't know. <laughs> I'm about to go, sir. I gotta get back. What's your name? One of the partners came into the office. Sorry. Uh, they he they <coughs> followed him. These 23 agents came through the premises. Ian had with him a couple of books, an appointment book, a list of affairs, and a book in Studio 54. No financial records. The only thing the internal ag revenue agents were authorized to look for were financial records. That claim has been dropped, and no warrant and no complaint has been filed with reference to any internal revenue violation whatsoever. Instead, they say that located someplace in an envelope, someplace in the business premises, not in Studio 54 itself, was an envelope that contained five packets of cocaine. This is by which the internal revenue agents think is cocaine, but since they are IRS agents, not drug agents, they're not sure it's cocaine. The magistrate before whom the case came released Mr. Schrager, on his own personal recognizance, he was in and out of there in a matter of minutes. It has absolutely no effect on Studio 54 from a legal standpoint as far as Mr. Schrager is concerned, who is the only one against whom any complaint has been filed. We are fully confident that that complaint is going to be dismissed. At the moment, we are struggling with the proposition of trying to restore the premises to the owners and to the public and to get more internal revenue agents that I know existed out of here. Well, they what are they confiscating? What are they they're confiscating them. What are they, they aren't confiscating. They're grabbing everything in sight, including pieces out of the wall. Why? Well, why would they do that? What's the their investigation? Because they have an inter they have a, an internal revenue audit going, which is the same thing that happens to 10 million American taxpayers, except it's a little bit unusual when you send 23 agents up and come tearing into a place at 9.30 in the morning. Uh, the financial books and records have been available. Their accountants and their lawyers have been available to the government at all times. But drug enforcement people are now inside. We know that. 
Oh, Why are they there now? Nice telling me. I know that too. They're there because in the business office, I think I just told you before, was found this envelope containing what they say were five small packets of cocaine. By the piece way, the building they live. That's a piece. Of, that's well, what do you mean? Yeah, what is going on? Oh, it's really such a happy right, occasion for you. Uh, uh, it's, not, it's not happy at all, but you realize when you're in the public eye sometimes that you know that these things happen. It happens similar to one thing once before with the liquor license, and you realize that I'm not happy this happened. I'm really upset that it happened, but you realize these things happen. And Are you saying you're being picked on, Steve? Uh, well, I, I think that I'm being picked on uh, certainly a lot more than I wasn't written any letter about any investigation. 23 agents just came in. We gave them everything we wanted, and when they came in, they said, well, should we break open the safe? We said, we'll open the safe for you. They said, should we... We were the actual break open the doors and let us open the doors for you. Uh, I, you know, I certainly don't think that this is a normal operating procedure. Why do you think they would be coming in here with a federal search warrant to look at your financial records? Uh, why they would be coming in? Because, because it, we're in a public we're in a public spotlight and and everybody's saying how much money the place makes and things like that and and uh, I think that it, it's you know and it's going to be a lot of publicity for the What about the president of Are you going to be open tonight? Are you going to be open tonight? Yes, we are definitely going to yeah. be open. Yes. We, well, we and there are no formal yeah. charges against Studio 54 or Studio you 50 or Studio, wait, 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 wait. Studio, Studio 54, Steve Rubell, are not mentioned directly, indirectly, in any way. Only one charge has been filed. That's been against Ian on something occurring in the business premises, not on the premises of Is that Studio a drug 54. Charge against That's Mr. just what I told you right. about, because they say that he was on the premises when they found this envelope with these five little packets of white powder. What, is it? Well, what was it? Like wasn't it, right now, it was not in his briefcase. They do not allege it was in his briefcase. I've read the complaint and I was in court and What's you weren't. Right? Steve, is there what does it look like what inside right now? It's, uh, it's, it's just that they're taking the boxes and they're pawing the boxes up. The place is in order. I mean, they're being a little careless sometimes at the building, but the place is in order. But There's no different than you saw. Do you have any, do you have any no, fears that any drugs religion. will be found on the premises or anything like that? Let me, let me say that from a legal standpoint. I'm sure that drugs are not going to be found in the premises, but let me say this to you. When you have uh, over 100 employees, when you have 2,000 people in and out every night, and talking about any disco in the United States, it would have to be the height of naive day to say that we can police what everybody has in his pocket or anything along those lines. We've got a big security force. We do the best we can. We cooperate fully with the authorities. But if you want a bond poster that no one ever smoked a joint in a discotheque in the United States, you're talking to the wrong guy. Because I think it's perfectly possible that could happen. Does this place distribute drugs, or are they going to find uh, heroin or quantities of this or that? No. Thank of course you very not. Much. Jay, please get in. What, what about the, uh, the liquor license? for a federal judge getting an order to get these people out of here. I mean, it's still America, it's not Russia, it's not Nazi Germany. You don't take over premises in the course of an investigation by Internal Revenue, install 23 people with microphones, pull them in by the truckload, followed by television cameras, and uh, shut down the place in the middle of a tax investigation so without one specific charge. We have a lawyer down there right now to get these people out of this place. Are you and suggesting this is the really a publicity stunt on well, IRS? Well, you tell me one other instance in American history when 23 Internal Revenue agents at the beginning of an investigation, before they even go to a company's accountants or lawyers, come in and raid a place, tear it to pieces, open up everything in sight. Uh, if that's ever happened before in America, I've never seen it. What did they tear to pieces? They don't have to show me the warrant. I believe they have 500 warrants. What are Why they are they cases warrant? Have they given you no indication what the focus of this Wait IRS investigation is? No. They got a warrant based on, well, you know what all the warrants say. The warrants say, we've received a tip or an information and belief the place is making a lot of money. Well, sure, they're making a lot of money, and they're reporting a lot of taxes. Period. We're very confident when the Internal Revenue Audit is finished that they're going to be fine. And if they get assessed anything extra, they pay what they're assessed. But it still isn't an America. It's not um, the America we know. When you send 23 Internal Revenue agents in, and wreck, and when I say wreck, I'm saying just go up and down a place, force the cancellation of a Christmas party, a parading up and down there, speaking to each other with microphones. Uh, it looks like a circus. 
uh, instead of an operation of the United what time States government. Why do you think the organized crime task force is being involved in this? Pardon me? Why do you think the organized crime task force is involved I don't know that the organized crime task force is involved in it, but let me say this. We had this all out before the ABC board, which unanimously approved the license, before the State Liquor Authority, where the appellate courts unanimously ordered the issuance of a license. There is no connection, direct, indirect, any shape, manner, or form, between Studio 54 and organized, unorganized, disorganized, or any kind of crime. It's owned by Steve, it's owned by Ian, it's owned by Jack. There are no hidden now there are no hidden interests. There is no organized crime of any kind involved. And they can investigate from now to doomsday, and their investigation will confirm what I'm telling you. There, 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 there is one no thing, laundering there, of money, no concern with that at all. Oh, there, no. There, there's, there's something I'd like to say. You know, there's something about when people ask you a question like that that automa automatically makes you people think that they, you know there's guilt implied by asking the question, and uh, it, you know. But just by asking that question, there's an implication to the public that it does exist, and it doesn't exist at all. Well, it's very organized. hard. To what would organized right crime? Be, what would be a relationship between? First of all, no responsible person has ever alleged a relationship between this place and organized crime. We all know there are plenty of other places in the city where it exists. As a matter of fact, as far as this place is concerned, it was built and financed by Steve and Ian for money they made in restaurant operations they have had successfully for many years. There are no hidden interests in this organized crime thing, which I have never heard even the government suggest. There's a lot of nonsense. Steve, you're going to be open to tonight. Well, well, I'm not about to fall on my face about something the Justice Department says, but this is the first time anyone tells me that the Justice Department says organized crime is involved in 54. I don't believe they did say it. No, because they said the organized crime task force was oh, involved in this I don't know what task force are. About three quarters of them have been dissolved. Uh, there is no organized crime, and we have never been notified of any investigation. And we're really beating a dead horse here because there's no allegation. Well, I'm not concerned crime? about the uh, about uh, nobody likes an internal no, nobody likes an internal revenue service uh, audit. And nobody likes that, but I, I accept that. But I'm not concerned about the organization of task force. Had you ever, Steve? Had you ever, ever had any indication from the IRS that they were looking at you in any other than normal way? Uh, no, no. I mean, not uh, normal in the sense that when I first started at my restaurants, I, 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 you know, I, I went through all that and that stuff like that. Having to do with it. No, no. Have you been audited before? No, I've never been personally audited or um, for the company. Or the company. No, we we got, we have we don't even have any filed our second tax return. I think. No, if you were asking the procedure. I don't do do the uh, I don't do the uh, counting work in the place or anything to do with it. I, I handle the front end. Are you asking if the procedure is normal today? Of course they're not normal. You fellows have been around. This is the first time I've ever heard of 23 internal revenue agents before they speak to a man's account lawyers or anything, just coming in and walking into a place and staying in there all day long, forcing the cancellation of a Christmas party, uh, it's a little bit silly. It's a Did little bit silly. Is there any indication of what the focus of their investigation is? No, we yes. have no focus of anything. And we so have no, no charges on the tax No, agent. absolutely not. They obtained the warrant on a tax charge and dropped it in court today in favor of this cocaine thing. And do you think this could have anything to do with what is said to be a recent wave of buying and acquisitions on the part of Studio 54, buying into other businesses? I, uh, well, we're not buying into everything we're doing is, uh, we, we, we bought this building. I, I think what he's asking in plain English is... Is it be because we're in the public eye, I think, of course, in the public, you know, in the public eye, you know, when we came here, there was an anonymous phone call that uh, there was a, 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 a shooting on 8th Avenue and 53rd Street when I saw it newscaster this morning and they said there was an anonymous call it just seems so set up I, you know I don't like to think like that Steve one, I, one other point I think you ought to make them tell them about the calls you've been getting this afternoon uh, we've been getting a lot of calls from a lot of people just being very supportive very nice and, and you know in, in every area of life you know people who come here and uh, you know unfortunately they think this something like this happens but I, hey, I party here. Well, you have this point I understand the chain of restaurants yeah. a chain of other Nightclubs you plan to open, you've also. Well, I, I didn't, we didn't buy those. And none of the, first of all, none of those ventures had, uh, we had, we had partners for all those ventures. I, 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 I don't know. He owned, he owned, he owned the steak, some steak places. 
he's negotiating for other restaurant chains, but I, I still don't know that it's a crime in America for a guy who owns a restaurant to buy another restaurant. And we'd love to, you know, we want to open I mean, up other studios. It might, be, it might be a crime in Greece. So, so do America. you think this grows out of this business flurry that we're going to see where you're No, I think that when you're in a public eye, these things happen. I think I accept them. I think when we operate, I think everything is okay. I don't love that it happened. What, what about the five ounces of cocaine? I don't know anything about that. I really don't know anything about that. Are there any other drugs on the premises? I don't know anything about any other drugs. Did you know anything about drugs on the premises this time? No, I didn't. Absolutely not. Were you, what was your reaction to you? Has your partner been arrested for five ounces of cocaine? I, 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 I'm very fond of Ian. We went to college together. We met in college, and I, he's a good guy. And, uh, of course, I was upset. I immediately went to see his uh, sister and uh, his niece just to tell him so they wouldn't hear it in the news when he first talked about all Was Kobe use confidence to do no, I, I like what Roy said. I, I don't want to really comment on anything to do with the, the legal case. But, uh, I guess we you know. Dave, look this way, please. Thank you. I feel like the president today. Do you see this primarily as a tax investigation? As a yeah. Drug oh, yeah, it was a tax. It was, it, it was, a, it was from the uh, tax. Uh, IRS is the only one who ever obtained any kind of a legal process in connection with this. Drug enforcement never has up to this minute. Now, somebody said something about DEA coming up with a warrant. We've just, one of my law associates just examined the warrant. It's not a DEA warrant. It's another IRS thing. This thing has been all IRS, period. And in a highly unusual way. But as I say, it's, it's uh, just one of those things you have to put up with and you have to meet. And I think Steve's concern has been that they're not being inconvenienced to the public. So we're trying to let these gentlemen go back to their families or wherever they go yeah. back to and let the public have the place back again tonight. Yeah, my concern, my uh, concern. I think the marshals and some of the agents <laughs> have grabbed off most of the tickets by this time. Was it closed tonight or was it open? No, it will be open tonight. You know, we're just trying to get the place. We couldn't clean it up during the day because there were so many of them in there. Unfortunately, they wouldn't let the regular workers in to clean up. I mean, they, some little 14-year-old uh, girl came in to drop off something for her mother and they searched her. You said you know what the drugs on the premises how does he know whether any he does so not believe so? I don't know what you're trying to get at. Really, you ask the same questions 20 times. I don't think Pull I should answer time. 20 times. The answer is, as far as anyone connected to Studio 54 is, this is not a warehouse for drugs. It's a discotheque. If someone brings in drugs or if someone has a joint in his pocket, we try to prevent it. We have a big security force, but we can't give you a written guarantee as any discotheque owner in the United States could give you that that's never happened. We say it's a clean, well-operated, highly successful place. And it's going to stay that way. Is there anything anybody else wants to ask before I go? Except you. You yes, asked the same question over and over. We don't need the midnight part, the 11 o'clock. No, we can't get the place. We made the decision a while ago not to open it then. So. No, I can't. Can we get in there? No, because they're all in there, and uh, they don't want anybody else in there. Yeah, they're in there. Yeah, they don't want. They told us they don't have a right to tell us Yeah, I mean, you're the owner, right? Yeah, I, I, I tell you something. I, I'd rather them get it done so I could get the place open tonight and get the people cleaning it up now to get it ready for tonight. <laughs> It's big with you. Hi, Robert. Hey, listen, as far as I'm concerned, they could all come in. They no, but they don't want anybody in at this time. We have to fight to get a lawyer into this place. I came in through the front door to get in. It's the first time I had to run in. Take it for a tour. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't make out that tax. You can take us for a tour. Really, I have, I don't care. Uh, there's no, no. I know there's substantial. Oh, all I know is substantial. I really don't even handle that end of the business at all, yeah, at all. You know, so I. Just, I won't comment. Far, far more than the last five presidents of the United States put together. Right, that I will say. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else have anything else? Because we're not gonna. I'm not. I don't want to go through this today. Right. Okay. Okay. Listen, I'll be glad to take up with them the question of letting you fill us in and so on and so forth. We'll get word out. Federal judges today named a Republican former U.S. attorney to investigate allegations that White House Chief of Staff Hamilton Jordan used cocaine at a New York discotheque. Fred Graham has that story. The special prosecutor will be Arthur Christie, a 56-year-old Manhattan lawyer who once prosecuted mafia chieftains Frank Costello and Vito Genovese. 
Jordan will be investigated specifically about allegations that in 1978 he sniffed cocaine at the Manhattan Discotheque Studio 54. The owners, Ian Schrager and Steve Robel, made the charges when they were plea bargaining in an unrelated tax case. Jordan is denied ever using cocaine. The call for a special prosecutor came from Attorney General Benjamin Civiletti, who said he thought the charges were unsubstantiated, but that the new Ethics in Government Act required a special prosecutor whenever further investigation is warranted. The problem stems from the testimony of Jan Tyler, Jordan's date on the night of the Studio 54 incident, plus a number of other potential witnesses, all of whom refused to testify unless subpoenaed. Because only a special prosecutor has the power to issue subpoenas, Civiletti said one should be appointed to obtain these witnesses' testimony. In a report to the special three-judge court that selected Christie to be the special prosecutor, Civiletti said that there was no need for the special prosecutor to investigate other allegations that Jordan sniffed cocaine in Los Angeles during a series of parties in 1977 and during another alleged occasion in 1978 that had not been publicly disclosed until today and which was not further described. The Attorney General stressed that charges could be brought against the Studio 54 owners if the special prosecutor concludes that they were lying, and the Justice Department claimed that Christie will have the power only to investigate Jordan on the Studio 54 allegations. But Special Prosecutor Christie was vague as to how far his investigation might go. I said that the mandate is to conduct an investigation into the allegations that have been made against Mr. Jordan. That's it. Jordan, who will stay as White House Chief of Staff, said he's gratified that Civiletti found the charges unsubstantiated, regrets that the special prosecutor had to be appointed anyway, and will cooperate with the investigation. The First Lady said the President's family stands behind Jordan. I think he's one of the nicest young men uh, I have ever known, and I have never known him to do things that, um, uh, that he shouldn't do, that are uh, wrong. Uh, he's like one of my family. President Carter's comment about Jordan was, he will tell the truth as my wife would or my children. Fred Graham, CBS News at the White House. Outside the courthouse today. Did he get our left side? Well, they said it was stage shots. Click, click, click. What are you doing up there? Take a picture of the house. you move out of the way completely? Watch these ones. Watch these ones. Somebody's on my wire. Can you I? You pointed with the blonde hair. Hey, Louie, don't get back in the way. We'll, we'll be down. I already got your camera, Louie. Right this way. Right this way. Louie, I got your camera, Louie. Oh, I got your camera, Louie. He's going to come down to us. Hello. Hey, Louie. There we go. What's up, you want to watch? Right there, right there, right there. Right there. Okay. Come on down a little bit. Come on down. Come on. You've got to come down a little bit. There we go. Okay. I feel like I'm outside Studio 54. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, how do you feel? You're going to get sentenced on the 18th. How do you feel now? Nervous. Do you think you're going to, well, what do you What do you think you might get? I have no idea. All other charges have been dropped now as a result of your pleading guilty today. Yes. Do you think that your dealings uh, revealing the uh, the drug charges, the accusations made against him, Jordan, had anything to do with this? Uh, I have nothing to say about that. The, uh, it was made clear in court today that by order of Judge Owen, certain discussions have been sealed. Uh, certain discussions between the government and between defense counsel uh, have been sealed by order of the court. And there will be no, there will, there will be no discussion of the Jordan case today. No, what are you going to do? If everyone... What are you going to do? going to be working in about 20 minutes. What are you going to be working? Hang it up for the rest of the time. Just go back to work? Just go back to work. Do my job. What made you do it? Was it green? Too much money, too fast? I made a mistake. Did you ever make a mistake? Why you did you make too much money, too fast? Why? Why did you make it? I don't want to get back. To I don't want to get I just made a, a bad mistake. I'm sorry I made it. And, uh... Do you, do you, do you think there's going to be any impact on your business there at Studio 54? There's been so much happened already. I, uh, there's Nothing seems to impact the business of Studio 54. It's a tax charge. It really has nothing to do with the operation of the business. Are you and Shrega still anybody? friendly after this? He's my best friend. I love him dearly. Any relation to the State uh, Liquor Authority and what the, the charges they plan to get against him? Roy would be better off asking oh, yeah. that. 
What reaction to it? Uh, the law of New York is that uh, tax charge cannot be the basis of any disciplinary action by the uh, state liquor authority. Do you feel that so he's home no free now on the, uh, the status of the liquor uh, license? Yeah, I don't view the liquor thing to start with. Uh, we've moved so long, I suppose, so much forward from days of prohibition and all of that, that the amount of red tape you have to go through to get a drink in a place sometimes becomes a little bit ridiculous. Uh, there have been flat holdings by the New York courts that ta tax charges are unrelated to the operations, to the ability to operate uh, a licensed premise, and uh, all of the lawyers are in agreement that uh, Studio 54 will keep its license. So Roy, the authority has if a everyone... To stand on that in case. No, <laughs> and as a matter of fact, a good number of the allegations made by the State Liquor Authority were bef before they knew what was going to happen here today, and the basis of them really rests on charges which were indicated in court today the government yeah. is going to Now, a few yes. months ago, you all held a press conference at Studio 54, and it had a little different tune than what we heard in court today. Why the change of admitting that they were guilty? I don't quite get you. A couple months ago, I was at a press conference at Studio 54 where their innocence was proclaimed. Today, they changed their mind and decided to plead guilty. Why the change? They didn't change, change their mind today. Uh, virtually, I think the points that were made at the press conference concern the number of agents involved in the raid concerned the fact that very, very substantial taxes have been paid by Steve and Ian and by Studio 54 in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. What this turns on is, when you get down to the nitty-gritty of the accounting, there was income which was earned in 1977, which should have been under the law reported in 1977, but was not reported until a later date and uh, it should have been reported in the year 1977 and uh, after discussions with the government when uh, they indicated a willingness to drop the obstruction charges after investigation and drop the drug charge after investigation uh, we were satisfied that this 1977-78 uh, theory of the government was correct and decided to enter the plea. There are practical considerations that go into it too practical considerations of uh, what you gain and uh, by spending uh, two months in a, in a courtroom with a bunch of lawyers who, as we all know, are pretty hard on reaches, and um, everybody reached a decision that this was a fair and proper disposition of the matter. Roy, right. so, 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 the thing that we were most pleased about in ending the, uh, is that they did a thorough drug investigation. Uh, at the time, and they, they, we had a, I don't think anybody could have been watched more carefully, and they, when they came, we were found completely, we were completely exonerated in the drug investigation, and that makes me, although I made a tremendous personal mistake with the taxes, um, for everybody that comes there and everybody that has a good time there, I, I people are not going to think at least anymore that, you know, that, it, 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 that, that all that nonsense about being a place where people just go you know, take drugs. It's a place where people go drink, and we wanted to drink. That's how we make our money. Boy, you know, does that, does that exonerate Hamilton anyone? Jordan from the drug charge, There too? will be no discussion about Mr. Jordan today. Steve, Adam should anyone have to serve a jail sentence? What becomes of Studio 54? Seen. Does it have to close? Is there any indication that the Jordan Studio 54 is Studio 54. The, uh, I'm Steve Rubell. Of of Steve, Steve, if Steve Rubell is in prison, is Studio 54 going to be open? I just can't talk about anything. Of course, I'm scared. I'm nervous. I don't think anybody in the world would want to be in my position right now. Okay, but Roy, you don't feel that Steve will have to serve any time, do you? I handle the same way uh, other people, little people, big people, are handled as first offenders under similar circumstances. Uh, we all have confidence in the system of justice here, and we have confidence in the fairness of this judge and the judges of this court. And, uh, that's well, Roy, it. did anything go wrong with the plea bargaining? Listen, when you have about 37 lawyers involved in anything, uh, something's always going to go wrong. Uh, everything went wrong, and uh, everything just came together uh, about 10 days ago. Is what that you, why you changed your mind? Is that why you decided at this time to turn around and plead guilty? It's I would just say there was really ever a change of mind. Right from the start, uh, Steve and Ian were very forthright with the... Uh, 
district attorney's office. We're down here day after day uh, working with the agents on a reconstruction of the books and records, trying to sort out what was due in 77, what was due in 78, uh, whether there's anything which still has not been paid. And uh, Well, you changed your mind somewhere along the line because you're saying you're going to plead guilty now. All of a sudden you turned around and you yeah, had your client's okay. plead instant. When? Why? It's, well, I wish I could answer it as simply as you put it. It's not just that. The obstruction counts have been dropped, the drug count has been dropped. As far as the taxing is concerned, after going over the records and after their reconstruction of the records, it is clear that there was additional tax due Thanks. in 77, which was not paid, and the fact that it's paid the next year does not excuse the failure to pay it in 77 and to put the government to the uh, expense and Stephen Ian through uh, a long trial that would involve financial records for a period of weeks and weeks was something that everybody felt should be avoided, and it has been avoided, and uh, that's it. All right, even though you're not going to discuss the Ham Jersey incident, does that in indicate that there is something going on still in terms of that Steve may have to testify against Pam? There is no comment whatsoever on that. There are specific uh, restrictions on our ability to discuss that situation today. And neither Steve nor I nor Ian can say one word about that. One of the uh, parts of your statement indicated that the sudden hey, unexpected growth of Studio 54 business uh, yeah. Yeah. I, there's nothing to amplify. I, I made a mistake. Uh, it was a mistake in judgment. We paid the taxes in 1978. Uh, I, I should have spent more time with the books and records and things like that than I did worrying about the place and the people who came there. Steve, I'm going to ask you one more time. You said Studio 54 was Steve Rubell. No, it's I said Steve Studio 54 is Steve, Studio 54. Steve Rubell is Steve Rubell. And if Steve Rubell has to spend any time in jail at all, what happens to Studio 54? I'm sure it'll do just fine. Stay open. And stay without open. you. And stay Oh, No question about that. Steve, you said I should have paid more attention to the books. You knew the books were being tampered with, didn't you? I really didn't pay any attention to the books and records, although it was my responsibility to. The uh, books, and it's been made very clear by everybody that the, everybody knows it, the books and records were kept with Mr. Dushi's uh, jurisdiction. He's the one who signed the tax returns, and he's the one who kept the books and records, uh, period. But it was my responsibility. And right. Stephen Ian acknowledged the fact they should have paid more attention to that end of things. In other words, more attention to the back door than the front door. And uh, everything just came down so suddenly that uh, things got into a, into a mess now. Hold me here next time. Yeah, OK. Hold on, Ben. Oh, OK, you're loose. Oh. Wait a minute. Absolutely. I mean, this, this seems to have blown your mind a little bit. Yeah. Not blown my mind. I'm very sensible. My head's on my shoulders about it. You know, I just did something wrong. My mistakes are just very visible right now. Very visible. All right. Thank you, Steve. Thank, Thank you. you.